Hello everyone, with me today is a galloping pony and you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. <laughs> This cigar has been a favorite at OGT, and finally we have it back in the humidor and we're offering it now. Unbeknownst to some, we are in the midst of what is known as a like cigar boom. People are clamoring to get cigars, quality cigars. There's a lot of different factors that go into this. There is the factor of, of course, COVID and all the situation that we went through 2020 and are kind of recovering up from 2021. There's also the boom of the boutique cigar world. There are quality cigars that are coming out that everyone wants to get their hands on. A lot of limited runs, a lot of really good blends that did not exist a year, two years ago. And on top of that, it's the education. People learning more about tobacco, people understanding it better, finding out what tobaccos they do like, what they gravitate towards, etc. I bring all this up because it is hard to get a hold of quality sticks. The one in particular that we are smoking today is a somewhat new release from Stallone Cigar. Stallone has come out of the gate and it is galloping and it is doing really well here at Oakland Tobacconist. A lot of people have jumped on. They are just known for that like punch a flavor, that strength, that some of them even kick you in the teeth type strength. So the Pony is very unique. It is a Sumatra, the one and only Sumatra cigar coming out for Stallone cigars. And it's also unique by its shape. I have it here with me. This is a four and a half by 58 gauge. This cigar uh, is much sort of like a Vitola you'd find on a nub. It's short, it's stubby, but Unlike a lot of Stallone cigars, it is more on the mellow side. It has that flavor, all those signature like flavors that you find in Stallone. A lot of seen reviews of these Sumatra blends. I'm a big fan of Sumatra. I'm a big fan of uh, Corojo. Sometimes I feel like they don't get the love that they deserve. So I want to see how this is going to stand up to some of the other Stallone cigars, the impressions that they give, and also what it is that's different about a pony like this and what the Vitola might do to the blend. The only way to learn is to cut it, open it up, and see how it smokes. A lot of cedar, a lot of like, almost like malt, like malted barley, if that's the right word, but cedar, malty and uh also a little earthy as well so we'll see what that brings i'm a big fan of cedar cigars so we'll see if that continues or if that's just on the foot you know it's always an interesting thing trying to toast and light up something that's 58 to 60 gauge it can take a while All right, we have cinnamon spice out the gate. A little bit of that maltiness that I was talking about. I can, I still get it on the tongue. Um, not so much on the cedar note though, but a little bit of that cinnamon spice. I've started to kind of gravitate and try to try to learn uh, more of like, what is that peppery note and then cinnamon? Cause there's like almost that sweeter element and that's the kind of spice I'm getting off of this. I don't know if it's fully lit, so I'm just gonna touch it up just a touch here. A good test, especially on 6x60s, if you're not sure if you got it completely lit. You've probably seen it in the movies. People light their cigar, turn around and blow on it. Well, that's exactly what you're doing is you're glowing, making the entire thing glow up to see if it's properly lit. All right, so a lot of that, that cinnamon first, that's right on the front of the palate. Sweetness on the, the retrohale and a little bit of that barleyness uh, halfway through. Um, quite a bit of things going on. I will say what normally this Vitola lends to a lot of cigars is that when you light it up, you have the flavor right away. You're not like waiting for the warm up time. It's straight when you light it. The burn seems to be doing good. Right now, I'm really enjoying the draw. I'm also enjoying the smoke output. So I'm gonna continue to smoke this pony and let's see where we land in the second third. And so far, I'm getting a ton of smoke output. The flavor is on point, and I'm really enjoying the, the openness of the draw. What it's losing points with me right now is that the ash is kind of doing a silly thing right now, and it's burning somewhat wonky and uneven. Aside from that, I'm getting a lot of that cinnamon sweetness, almost like, uh, 
You definitely have that cinnamon spice, but there's such a sweeter tone to it that's really, really pleasant. There's also that bready note. Maybe that's what I was thinking of as far as like barley. Is there, is there a bready note? And there's a tingling of saltiness on my tongue. So a lot of different things that are going on, especially as I'm smoking it further down. It almost feels more complex and light at the same time versus like deep, dense flavors. When I think of something deep or dense in the flavor profile, I think of something more of that, like that chocolate, like devil's cake or something that's more like dark earth, musty earth, barnyard, that sort of thing. This is more on the light surface. There's the sweetness, there's the spice, there's the bready note. Uh, so I'm going to take a second puff and see second impressions. All right, so it's still that sweetness, that that uh, saltiness on the end of my tongue, that almost feels like a salted caramel. Like there's like a custard element to it going on as well. Again, that's why I think it would probably go really well with something like coffee because you'd have the, the bitterness of the coffee drawing out more on that sweet tone for my mind, I think, to wrap around better. So far though, it is smoking great. Um, aside, from, aside from the burn, we'll see exactly how that happens as we continue and smoke it into another third. All right, so we are getting into the last third here, somewhat, kind of in the middle, still in that kind of second third, but gonna be edging to that final third. Starting to ramp up a little bit in strength, but in a really good way. Sometimes when you deal with cigars like this, it gets really hot, which is not, not the case right now. More of what I'm getting is a, like a kick in some of the power behind it. As you can see, the smoke output is great. It does lose some marks for having to touch it up so often, but honestly, for a cigar, in its slow burning quality like this, and also its price point, like Stallone's price point is already good. When you're dealing with a cigar with this price point, it's almost stupid. It's almost ridiculous how much this smokes above its price point. And so I'm getting a lot of those complex flavors, a lot of those, those different notes of cinnamon and that bready note. Um, so I'm gonna take another puff here and we're just gonna see where we uh, kind of finish our conclusion on it. So some of that cinnamon note it's kind of moving back, and I still have some of that breading note, but what's coming forward is almost like a sandalwood and like leather, hints of like leather and sandalwood. At least that's what I'm getting to my mind when I'm smoking this. Very good, interesting. So you have a good balance. I feel like that wood note kind of brings a good balance between some of that spice and some of that sweetness. So it's a good marriage in between both, and very pleasantly surprised how complex a cigar of this size can truly be. As always, check out Stallone Cigars. Check us out at oaklandtobacconist.com, and of course, my name is Eric. Thank you again for smoking with me on Oakland Tobacconist.